the most significant effect of the industrial era is that it has birthed the information age and has brought us into communication with your race on a scale far beyond what otherwise would have emerged. The Industrial Revolution drew the inherent contradictions of the fearful state into high visibility at a time when the intelligence level among human beings has risen to unprecedented heights, almost to the very threshold of awakening, global telecommunication systems now keep human attention focused upon the problems that result from sphere-centered ways of thinking. It will keep your attention focused on these problems until you solve them through the only act that can, a total departure from the entire warrior paradigm. The departure from the old ways of history has begun. Many are now aware of us. Our consciousness flows daily through the word processors of a thousand creative thinkers. Our insights and perspectives are bubbling beneath the surface of dozens of new movies, hundreds of new books, and thousands of news articles and popular songs each year. Humankind is linked in a single socio-economic community that now closely monitors all new and potentially relevant information. Your present global civilization is rooted upon premises of separation from God as flawed as any civilization that came before, but it has dynamically accelerated our education of your race. It has increased human intelligence across the board Hundreds of thousands of you are now about to understand something that 200 years ago we could only get through in bits and fragments to a few isolated individuals. Next chapter is Survival, Cooperation, and New Beings. Just as distinct little beings work together to produce each complete human cell, there are spirit beings designed to work in symbiotic cooperation with each human ego. There are many names for us. We have been called angels, bird tribes, higher selves, hadsiskas, spirits of the stars. The reality of what we are is more than a name can convey. We are the multiple projections of the Eternal One, spirits designed to blend with present-day humans. You now consider yourselves to be your egos but egos are, are only one half of the human equation. The complete human is a spirit-ego partnership. We are individualized aspects of one holy and eternal being. We are your spirits as they exist apart from the spell of matter. We do not evolve, we incarnate. Our intelligence is pre-existent. Our identities highly focus frequencies of starlight. You need us to be whole, just as we need you to fully enter the physical plane. We seek to awaken in your minds and hearts to incarnate in your bodies. We are here to return your human circuitry to its creator. Yet your human egos are the guardians of this circuitry, the stewards of your minds and hearts, and without your ego's cooperation, our bonding with you is impossible. Your ego, you ego-ruled humans who feud and fight among yourselves do not seem to realize the obvious. The very values that you employ to determine your social behavior would, if employed by your body's parts, effectively block any cooperative association of ribosomes, enzymes, mitochondria, and other little life forms from providing you with even a single coherent cell to say nothing of a healthy and integral human body. Hundreds of thousands of little beings all working voluntarily together make a human body what it is. It is not a case of survival of the fittest as your belief systems based on short-term observations proclaim. It is rather a case of flourishment of the most cooperative as all long-term observation of the universe verifies. It is through cooperation with one another that diverse forms of life adapt and thrive, and it is only through the symbiotic cooperation of a multi 
multitude of simpler organisms that more complex organisms like your bodies are able to come into existence at all. At critical stages in their development, life forms cooperate for their own advantage with other separate and distinct life forms. Over time, their cooperation results in union. A new organism comes into being. Again and again this occurs in the formation of complex life forms. This is analogous to what is about to happen again in your late 20th century human wor as your late 20th century human world reaches the optimal moment for materially oriented ego-ruled human beings to be joined by their spirit world counterparts. Your race is soon to experience widespread awakenings or as some will see it, a massive descent of beings from the stars. We are the dreams of the Great Spirit, the true dreams, the clear dreams, the pure dreams, never tainted by fear, never touched by any motivation other than the motivation of love, and yet we are dreams nevertheless, thoughts, disincarnate beings drifting formless through the universe that has placed the highest value on form living in the consciousness of a creator whose desire is to take form in the very creature that re will result from our bonding with you. Our spiritual intelligence is the missing dimension, the reject rejected aspect of your own wholeness. For thousands of years you have been afraid of us. Many of you are now learning that you have nothing to lose and everything to gain by establishing establishing contact with us once again. It is only your ego that makes you fear. Your ego is here to look after your physical body to make sure it gets enough to eat, to make sure it does not walk over the edge of a cliff or damage itself unknowingly. Your ego is the steward and potential master of all material plane fears, an important and necessary component of your identity. However, your ego was never meant to provide you with your primary sense of self. In a healthy state, the ego is a secondary component of identity. In a healthy state, the being behind all being, the self behind every self, the great spirit behind all of creation, is experienced as your primary sense of self. Your ego does not have to be repressed or transcended for this to happen. It does not have to die. It simply has to assume an appropriate relationship with the spirit that in truth you are, the spirit that wants to incarnate and take up residence in your body, mind, heart, system. Your ego is by nature a reflection. It can either be a good, sharp, clear reflection, or it can try to be an independent reflection. Yet logic shows there is no such thing as an independent reflection. Your ego may create such an illusion, but if you believe in it, you will be troubled and unfulfilled. When your ego stops trying to do everything all by itself and invites eternal spirit into your consciousness, your historical illusion evaporates like mist on a sunny morning. A polarity reversal takes place in the charge of your human envelope. The field of consciousness around you changes. Instead of your ego dominating your sense of identity and blocking your awareness of the Great Spirit, an eternal sense of self awakens within you. You know yourself as a projection of the Creator of all the stars in the sky. You know yourself as one of a family of God beings sharing God being. You remember Everything is seen differently. The world is perceived anew through the eyes of a universal awareness. Your ego becomes your working partner and you commence the conscious creation of a new human reality. We bring to you an angelic awareness that historically has not often been incarnate in human form. We bring an eternal continuity of consciousness that henceforth you might know yourselves as we know ourselves. Together in loving cooperation, we join to provide spirit and matter with the optimal balance.